What's up, guys? Chris Gethin here. Welcome to the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. Can you all do me a favor? Just a little one. I don't ask for much. Can you subscribe to this? And can you get your friends to subscribe as well? Because that's how we live of this thing. I don't have any sponsors. I don't take any money. I actually pay quite a lot for this uh, podcast because... I only know how to chinwag. I don't really know the technical side of these things. And the only way that I can tell if I'm doing well is by looking at all the subscribers. At the moment, I have two. I'd like to get three, please. So please, that third person, can you subscribe? That would be awesome. So this week, I'm going to get straight into this because it's all about time management. So I'm not going to talk about the price of butter. I'm not going to digress. I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm going to get straight into this. Time management is a problem that the majority of people out there seem to have a justification of excuse for. I don't have time. I don't have time. I have kids. I don't have time. Work commitments. I don't have time. There's too much stuff on the TV. So we're going to work on that, aren't we, everybody? Nod your head. Okay, acknowledge me at the very least. So... We all have neuro pathways that makes us uh, who we are. It gives us our characteristics, our personalities, our funny, fickle little ways. And sometimes those neuro pathways work for us and they'll work against us as well. You know, if you're kind of disciplined, you're committed, but hey, you fall off the wagon every single night, then you've got neuro pathways that are working for you during the day and the ones that are working against you in the evening. And you may find it weird because you're so disciplined and structured in so many areas of your life except for this one or two things. Why? Because as much as you are disciplined to stay on the wagon, you are as disciplined through habit to fall off it. And it's very hard to get out of those habits and out of those ruts. So think of that rut as turning into two ruts, then turning into a dirt road then it turns into a tarmac road, then it turns into a freeway. Now it's really hard to get back to that rut, you know? So these are the things that you have to kind of work on, on unraveling and replacing it with something else. Because it can be very hard, not only uh, from an emotional standpoint, but from a chemical standpoint, to actually change a habit just like that. Some can, some can't. Uh, Some can change some habits, but they are stuck on others. And I'll use any form of justification because that habit and that chemical response is so strong, it's controlling. You've all heard each other and ourselves justify our habits when they're bad, and you justify them to yourself. You know, I was listening to uh, Andy Frisella, Uh, And he was talking about uh, he hadn't lost, he's trying to lose some weight, and he hadn't lost any weight all week. And on the Saturday, he's like, bollocks to this. I'm going to eat my pizza. I'm going to have my pizza. Fuck it. But then he... He, he listened to himself and acknowledged that he was justifying the way that he could have that pizza and it would speed up his metabolism and then he'd maybe drop in the next day or so. So he thought, oh, no, 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 I've got to fight against this. This is just my weakness. This is my excuse coming to my forefront of my uh, uh, portal cortex. And uh, so he decided not to have that pizza. He got on the scales the next day, it dropped five pounds. So it goes to show if you fight against a lot of these neuro pathways that work against you and maybe replace it with something else, it can actually help you. So speaking of neuro pathways, neuro pathways can actually distract us as well. You know, if we look at, you know, when we're when we're working on a computer, when we're working on a project, when we're in a meeting, when you switch off, you normally find a distraction, and that distraction, 9.9 times out of 10, is your phone. You get distracted from work, you get bored, um, you know, you, 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 you get a bit of writer's block, and you go, oh, I'll just go and see what uh, Chris is doing on Instagram. Oh, but that's better than what I was doing anyway. No, just kidding. But, you know, a lot of people will just look at mindless stuff on Instagram. They'll check their email box. They'll go to Google. They'll go to the local news website. And then it's harder to get back in to the work project, that discussion, that meeting that you had originally gone on to. So whenever you have any of these times of distraction, 
try replacing that bad neuro pathway with something else. Instead of saying, okay, I'm gonna go cool turkey and just not go on my phone, replace it with something else. Always have a second option. So that could be some sort of breathing technique. It could be going outside for a walk. It could be picking up a book and reading it. It, it could be, I don't know, calling somebody positive and letting them know that you're having this distraction problem. What do they do when, when they've had the same? If this is somebody that you look up to, maybe a mentor or something like that, something that will take your mind off it. Much like if you have a weakness for cheesecake, for candy, for pretzels, for, a, I don't know, salted nuts, then maybe replace that with something else. That distraction could be a cup of tea. It could be a casein mixed with fruit. Something that replace replaces that bad habit that's always there lingering, poking you on the shoulder. One thing that I've always told my clients my uh, support group, my friends who have any problems with trying to stay on track with their time management, I always say, where's your checklist, bro? And if I get them to do a checklist, the week after I'm still saying, where's your checklist, bro? You gotta have a checklist. You've heard it from me, you've heard it from a hundred other people. The reason why, because it works. If you have a checklist of what you have to get through the entire morning or through that next hour or the next week and you revisit that after that hour, halfway through the day or halfway through the week, you are so much more likely to get it done. You're accountable to something. you got to check that list off. I personally like to have some sort of reward system. So if I work hard throughout the, enti- throughout the week and you know my week is quite normally Monday to Sunday, then Sunday evening, I'll allow myself to go to the cinema and have a uh, watch a movie, or I'll go out for a meal, or something like that. I'll have that reward system. I'd like to say I'd be snorting coke off groupies, but that's not the lifestyle that I live. It's a, it's a fantasy. Uh, but what I'll do is if I, if I don't reach those goals, you know what? I forfeit. I forfeit that. You know, I know this isn't for everybody. Not everybody has to work through, through weekends. And I'm not saying that you should be robotic about this, but you should have some sort of checklist that you are accountable to. So I have a vision board at my home that is right behind my computer on the wall. And I see that every day and I go through my computer, I go through my content for the day that I've done. I look at that vision board and go, okay, have I done everything that I can to say I deserve to visit my grandfather this year, my uh, nieces this year, to pay the flights to go over and spend a week with them? Have I done everything that I can to work towards that house that I've always wanted Uh, Because I've always wanted to own a house, uh, but I've never had the money to do it. It's always been invested in, such as right now, Cajun Muscle. Um, And, uh, you know, there's holidays. I'd love to go to um, Indonesia. I'd like to go to Bali. Uh, I'd like to go to the Elephant Orphanage in Sri Lanka. And these are all things on my vision board. And I get to the end of the day, have I done everything to work towards that? If so, great. Okay, I get my time off today. You know, I can finish at 7 p.m. instead of 9.30, 10 p.m. Does that make sense? So get that checklist in for your check-in for the day, but also have a checklist that allows you to check out. So if I switch off and I'm spending time with my girlfriend, I need to completely check out because if I don't, I'm with my girlfriend, but I'm not because I'm checking my phone, I'm looking at emails, I'm looking at socials, I'm checking Google, whatever. I got to ensure, have I done everything that I can on this checklist now to completely check out and acknowledge the time with the people that I love so I am present there for them? Uh, Because otherwise, you know, people learn by observation. If I start checking my phone, she's going to start checking her phone. Then what's the point? You know, I see that with so many people and I don't want to become a part of it. I hope it's not spreading. Time management in this industry, if you are in the fitness industry, is extremely important. So let's go through the various types of preparation. Everyone knows the food prep. So on a Sunday and Wednesday, uh, I will usually food prep. I'll usually get a lot of my meals uh, sorted. Thankfully, I have a company called Nutrition Solutions that is an amazing solution, pardon the pun, uh, to my conundrums when it comes to time management. So 
I use uh, nutrition solutions now that will send meals to me. They overnight them to me. They are packaged. They are cooked. They're ready. So I just have to get them out of the fridge. Yes, it may cost me a little bit extra to do that than going to the supermarket, but spending time driving to the supermarket, deciding what I want, and I go there and half the stuff may be not there, what I want is run out or whatever, and then actually going home and cooking it and prepping it, then packing it because the majority of my meals aren't usually at home and they're all cold. Um, I invest that money, which is time as money, into Nutrition Solutions instead. So I have all my meals prepared, ready for me. Well, not all of them. Generally, I'll make my breakfast and my last meal. Um, so, you know, food prep, as we all know, is very important because if you wake up in the day, you know, in the morning, you're then running late because you're food prepping. And, you know, if you're a bodybuilder, you're eating six meals or you're having three meals and three supplements, et cetera, et cetera. But, how many people talk about their supplement prep, their gym bag prep, their clothes preparation? So much like when you're preparing your meals at the start of the week, I'm pretty sure that you'll have meal one, two, three, four, five, six, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all laid out. What about your clothes? Let me ask you this. How long do you spend in transition deciding what to wear every day? If you're anything like me, you're wasting a lot of time there. So this is what I would suggest. You get out your hangers. You label each one of these hangers Monday through till Sunday. Okay? And there you will have on that hanger what you are going to wear on that particular day. You may have three hangers. You may have your cardio gear. You may have your workout gear. You may have your work or social gear. But you've got it all there Monday together. And then you have Tuesday, and then you have Wednesday. And that's if you've got that many clothes, or you may have to do a wash uh, every now and again. I like to do it once every six months. Uh, but then that's what I would suggest because the amount of time that is wasted in transition of trying to decide what to wear for the day, you know, you put it on and go, that doesn't go with that. And you just change your mind altogether. I know what you bodybuilders are like. You've all got leg day clothes. You've all got chest day tank tops. I'm, I feel you, buddy. I feel you. I'm with you. So try doing that, please. And hashtag me, Chris Gethin. Hashtag me on Instagram with your newly labeled hangers. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that because I think, I think it's a concept there that a lot of people should embrace. Food prep, everyone's doing it. Clothing prep, not as many. I always like to think of my workout that I've got the following day. And I'll visualize, I use a lot of visualization, what I'm going to wear during that workout. And I visualize that workout going ahead, the pain that I'm feeling, uh, the, the, the temperature of the gym, what the weight feels like in my hands or on my back. Uh, you know, I know my bones are going to be creaking there sometimes when I'm putting some heavy weights across my shoulders. So I envision that. And then uh, when I go through the motions, you know, I've already smelt that success. So it's easier for me to accomplish. Supplement prep. Now, I've got my jug of HydroCharge right here with me. And uh, I, in there, I've always got my fermented glutamine, my fermented branch chain amino acids, my HydroCharge. I have everything ready in there every single day. I'll also have all my other things prepara uh, prepared, whether that be my greens drink, that may be my, uh, my ginger, my cinnamon, my kefir, my apple cider vinegar, my magnesium. Uh, I, I have a lot of powders. I have a lot of powders that I take in the morning, uh, making sure that I have my omegas, my krill oils. And that takes a lot of time, takes a lot of time. So I have a very, very big fishing tackle box that holds 14 days of morning supplements and 14 days of evening supplements. And I will fill that bad boy up and make sure, okay, now I don't have to do that again for 14 more days, but at the start of those uh, 14 days, I have to spend probably about 30 minutes uh, preparing that. But that's much more efficient than spending 10 minutes every single day opening the cap, putting a cap on, spooning out the powder. Does that make sense? All right, so supplement prep and gym bag prep. 
What have you got in your gym bag specifically for that particular day? Get it all ready. Again, label it. Put it in little, like I have drawstring bags, and I'll put that drawstring bag in my big-ass gym bag. But in that drawstring bag, dependent on the day of what I'm training, I may have my knee sleeves, I may have my weights belt, I may have my knee wraps, uh, my uh, ankle, sorry, my uh, wrist wraps, my lifting straps as well. Um, you know, there's so many different things that I'll have on particular days. I'll have a certain certain supplements, maybe I may have certain other clothing, accessories, whatever it may be, but I have everything prepped. I have a lot of spare stuff in my gym bag as well. Should I forget something, I've got it there. I've got a dipping belt. I've got a, one of those little rollout rollers for uh, abs to do my ab rollouts. Um, I even have a brace to go over my head to work my neck. You know, there's a lot of things that I have in there and I can't fit it all in one bag. Or I could, but it's just a pain in the ass. It's an inconvenience. So I'll have a lot of drawstring bags. And this saves me time because I know a lot of time is wasted, as I said, in transition. When you're in the kitchen, what are you doing? Are you being efficient with the cups, with the bowls, with your mixing bowls, with your measuring cups? Are you being efficient or are you just wasting time dawdling along using too many pieces of cutlery, too many dishes, too many bowls? Efficiency is key. You'd be surprised how much time you waste during the day in transition. Transitioning into your email. Do you have intention before you start something? When you open your laptop, what is your intention? Is your intention to open an email? If that is your intention, is your intention to respond to it right then? Are you going to write a document in response? Are you going to put together a PowerPoint presentation? Or are you just having a chin wag? When you answer the phone or when you're calling up somebody, if you have a conference call, if you have a meeting, if you're just talking about the price of butter, whatever it is, what is your intention before you get on that phone call so you can go boom, 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 straight through it. You are curt. You get straight to the point. You know, it's not like, hey, how's it going? It's like, no, this is Chris and get straight into it. You know, people may think I'm very curt. Actually, I'm I'm not that accessible. Uh, But when, you know, when I'm uh, curt like that, it's because time is of the essence. Um, Some people could probably think that I'm very stressed. I think I am stressed on the outside in order for me to stay calm on the inside. If I don't give out that persona to myself, and I'm, you know, probably inadvertently giving it to others, um, I know time is going to get wasted and time is very, very precious to me. Um, money, okay, yeah, you can always get that back. You can always work for it. You know, everything's uh, surrounding us is materialistic to a certain degree. However, time, you'll never, ever, ever get that back. And that is very, very precious to me. That's why I always turn up to meetings or to this podcast or to these workouts for the video series that I'm currently shooting on time or earlier. I'll get to the airport earlier. I get everywhere earlier because time is very important to me. If somebody that I'm meeting is late, so be it. I've got a lot of work to do whilst I'm waiting for that person. Thanks to that little bloody mobile device that I carry around. It's given me EMF rays 24-7. So always have intention. That goes for your workout as well. You know, how many times do you go to the gym and you come away from that gym and go, oh, that was a bad workout. I didn't get everything that I wanted out of that. I don't think I'm going to be sore tomorrow. I spent too much time talking. What's your intention when you go there? Is your intention to push heavier weights than you did the week before? Is it to increase your intensity and shorten your rest periods, increase your volume? Do you have a certain structure of exercise that you're going to follow? You have to have intention in order for it to be a success. Yeah, you're going to have down days. There's going to be days that aren't going to be a success, but you're going to have so many more positive days if you have an intention before you commit. So that intention goes to when you're meeting someone, if you're going to a restaurant, if you're opening your laptop, if you're going to have a workout, you're going to go hit a run. Have that intention before you commit, okay? And then you're going to be that more accountable and and you're going to acknowledge the time. And you have to be fucking ruthless with your time. I get so many messages every day from people that say, hey, let's hop on a call today. Let's do this. Let's do that. Can we do this tomorrow? 
I have to turn down a lot. I don't give out my email to that many people, yet I get about 100 emails a day. Uh, and I have to be very, very ruthless a lot of the time to people who want my time. If I, you know, I'm not saying that I, <laughs> I have the value that I can give to people. I don't know why the hell people would want to meet with me, but I do not have the time to meet with everybody. That's why a lot of the time I, I download WhatsApp. It's an application that everybody in Europe uses, but mostly people in the UK don't use it because it's so much more efficient for me. I can send voice notes. I can send video notes. It's free. It's back and forth. Then if I get a message through, I can respond when I can. It's very hard for me to commit to time when my schedule really does get all over the place. Like It's only yesterday I got confirmation that this coming Friday I am flying uh, to um, East Rutherford in New Jersey uh, to the vitamin shop. I'll arrive there very late Friday night. Early in the morning, I have my first session. Then I have two more seminars that afternoon. Then the following day, I have a seminar immediately before I go to the airport. The last seminar and appearance is right close to the airport just so I can make my flight. My schedule gets all over the place, but I ensure that if my schedule is booked, it is efficient, you know, and that's the great thing about my team at Cage Muscle. We all know that we have to be efficient because we work with such skeleton staff that we have to, uh, you know, abs absolutely dominate with every minute that we've been provided. And uh, so you have to do the same. Look, if you're you know, if your friends want to call during the day and you know that you've got stuff that has to be done, don't be accessible. You have to add a, have a cutoff, if, especially if you are the person that works from home. Like if you think it, of it this way, if you are working in a factory or if you work, I don't know, working for somebody else in that sort of environment where you cannot pick up the phone until you clock out at six o'clock, that should be exactly the same at home. You know, of course you have your work calls, or of course you have your work commitments, but should you be taking calls from your mother, your father, your sister, your friends, your brothers? No, because your time is very valuable if you are trying to manage your time to spend more on yourself so you can be selfless instead of coming across as being selfish. Because the more time and emphasis that you can put into yourself, get into your goals, get in what you want to get done, the more time you're able to check out and spend time on the phone with your brother and spending time on the weekend with your family or whatever is it that you want to do. But you have to have efficiency and you have to make small sacrifices in order to see the longer term pictures of these games. So... Does that make sense? Are you are you are you acknowledging me? Are you helping? Are you, are you, am I helping you here? I hope so. Anyway, speaking of being efficient with our time and time management, I have to check out. Guess what? Because I've got to head on over to the gym right now and shoot the. This is the last week of my eight week muscle building video trainer that I'll be shooting, and uh, this will be out later in the year. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, so I need to take my pre-workout supplements and get my head game on and race there and make sure that I run all the red lights and get speeding tickets because I have to be efficient with my time. If you like this podcast and you'd like me to continue with it, please subscribe. But until then, my name is Chris Gethin. This is the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. I will see you next week.